uh, welcome uh, all of you in this uh, course housing policy and planning uh, i welcome you all uh, to this uh, uh, this course uh, in this course uh, today we are going to take the uh, lecture number 1 in this lecture we are going to introduce the subject housing policy and planning but before i uh, uh, enter into the subject uh, i will briefly uh, discuss about how we are going to take the course from the day 1 to the end of the uh, session and how we will conduct the uh, examination and the other assignments so before that let me uh, talk about uh, that why we uh, have taken this course under the nptl series uh, uh, because you know that housing is a primary need, basic need of the human being. Now, in this picture, you can see that the the people who are living in a in a very very inferior condition uh, in our cities. It is a very representative picture. You will go to any city in India or any other country. You will find that people who are not having a minimum uh, uh, living condition for their stay. They they lack the basic health facility, basic facility, basic structural condition to withstand the the natural disasters. So this is the problem in our cities related to housing. On the other hand, if you go to the large cities, you will find that the multi-storied uh, real estate development with big, very big buildings and very congested and compact cities. But in some cases, those cities are not having enough infrastructure and the uh, communities are not there. So, there is a big mismatch between the, uh, the supply and the demand. And also, you will find that even when we make the house, we do the housing for the common peoples for lower income group and middle income group, we find that the, the social problem, the, this is a basically a corridor, but the people using it as a uh, that their day to day activities which is not supposed to be done there. So, these are the social problem which are associated with the housing policy and planning and design. You might have seen this picture. This is an ongoing construction uh, in some of the Indian, in, in one of the Indian cities, uh, and during the construction, the whole projects, whole building collapsed, and as a matter of fact, uh, many people died. So, this is the problem related to technicalities and legality of the building construction in housing. So, considering all these issues or considering all these uh, uh, factors our motivation was why not we have a uh, sound course on housing policy planning so that the professionals and the academicians who are working in the field of housing who are researching in the field of housing they get a better know how and so that sometimes through this course and through some other actions in some time in future we can achieve the housing for all so this was the basic motivation because of uh, which we uh, developed this course now how we will approach this course and what is the basic objective of this course. The intent is, is to learn the primary uh, concepts, uh, uh, procedures uh, uh, related to uh, um, housing policy and planning. And then after the course, you will uh, go through all the uh, units of the course and at the end of the course, the, the primary objective of this course will be that you will be able to appraise the housing policies at the central level and state level, how it affects the housing development in your cities and illustrate uh, and describe the process of housing planning when you do exactly on your city, how you do in your cities and the villages. <coughs> Now, through this course, who will be benefited? Basically, the professionals, students and researchers who are working in the field of housing or who, or who wish to work in this field of housing to deliver housing or to improve the quality of the housing for the common people, they will be benefited from this course. Primarily, the professionals who are working at the central and state government department who are working in the field of housing and infrastructure development or students and researchers who are associated with the works which is done by the central and state government, they will be benefited. Apart from the, the, uh, the government sector, the sector who are working in the developers, manufacturers, uh, management uh, um, uh, consultancies and other 
uh, corporate offices who are uh, uh, directly or indirectly associated with the housing development, definitely they will uh, uh, get a advantage or they will get the benefit from this course in terms of the uh, current knowledge and the skills. Apart from the government and the private sector, there are various uh, NGOs and semi government organizations who are working in the housing field. Maybe they are working in the slum areas, maybe they are working in the village areas. So, uh, they will also benefit that how the overall paradigm of the housing policy and planning uh, uh, basically uh, works in the cities. So, they will also get much benefit from this course. Apart from that, international agencies basically those who are uh, working in the international agencies, but, uh, but they are focusing on the uh, national sector or some regional sector or some state level issues in our country, they will also get the benefit from this course. Now, we have uh, basically divided the course into uh, four sections. In these four sections, uh, two sections are major and two sections are minor. So, in the beginning, we will start this, uh, this session with the introduction section. This is a very brief session. This will uh, bring all the participants of this course in the same platform, so that we can start the course uh, in, a, in a common platform of the uh, knowledge level. The second unit is the housing policy. This is the major unit or major section. It will uh, involve three to four weeks of uh, uh, lectures and deliberations and discussions. Then we have the housing planning which is 4 to 5 weeks. Uh, this is another major section. We will discuss thoroughly about all the planning matters related to housing development. Then after that we have uh, the summary and conclusion stage where we will sum up all the discussion what we have uh, in the policy and planning matters uh, and we will uh, take the course for the further level. Uh, we will indicate some of the areas where the further research and the development is required. So, this four units, two major units and including two uh, introduction and summary units, every week we will have five small lecture units, total 40 units uh, along with the assignments, discussion cases and some reading materials which we will be giving time to time each week and also at the end of the course. Now, at the introduction section, uh, we have told you already that we have four sections. In the introduction section, we have um, uh, we have um, the first unit will be discussed on the uh, introduction to housing. Then we will discuss the the overall situation of the housing in India, especially and on the on uh, uh, for all the states. Uh, what is the existing situation? What are the what are the issues and the problems prevailing in the housing sector? We will discuss the housing typologies to discuss to start with the basic uh, 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 discussion on the housing planning and policy. It is very important to identify and to uh, differentiate and to um, uh, know in a better way in a detailed manner the housing typologies and how they, uh, how they um, function in a city level. In the housing policy, we will discuss the, the overall planning policy and the strategic matter at every level at the uh, government level, central government level, state government level and also at the local level. We will discuss the, uh, we will have an assessment of the past programs like what are the programs government of India and the, some of the state governments they did after the independence and what are the outcome and assessment of those programs and interventions and what are the key learnings from the program so that we can take the learning and go forward for the further development. It is very important to know the legal provisions. The legal provisions in terms of the central government acts, the state governments acts, rules, regulation which affects the development of the housing and the infrastructure in our cities. We cannot build a house in a, uh, in a, in, in a sky, we have to build uh, the house and housing in the land. And, and the land is not very much available in our cities and in our regions. So, how the land can be assembled, land can be procured and land can be utilized judiciously to, uh, to, to make the housing more effective, more affordable for the people and how the land reforms can help uh, more supply of the land in cities that also will be included in this uh, course. We will discuss thoroughly the affordability aspect of the house, 
we know that India is a poor country, we have a large section of the population uh, in, the, in, the, in the economic group of economical weaker section, uh, BPL and the uh, lower income group section. So, how we can uh, supply more uh, amount of uh, houses uh, within their affordable limit uh, with or without a subsidy by the government and how housing finance can act uh, to help them to procure a better house, bigger house, so that they can improve on their house that will be included in this course. We will definitely cover all the national housing policies and what is the major direction on the national housing policies, how we are learning from the first policy, second policy and the other policies. We will uh, discuss some of the element of the state housing policies, major salient features of the say, state housing policies, how a state government can formulate its housing policy uh, to, to accommodate each and every category of the housing that will be covered. Then programs and schemes, what specific programs or programs and schemes, how to do the programs, what are the problems on the programs and, uh, and, and what are the possible issues and how to address and cope off to uh, all those issues that will be covered. Then the in the second uh, major uh, section which is housing uh, planning which will be uh, covered in, uh, in almost 5 to 6 uh, weeks we will cover the, we will start with the city and regional planning, how the overall planning framework works in a city and region uh, that will be discussed. Uh, following the city and regional planning framework, we will discuss the strategic planning, then we will discuss the uh, development control, how development controls as a subset of the legal, uh, legal part, how it can help and imp and uh, help and address the development of the uh, built environment which which can help decision maker and the planners to make a city to make a better housing environment in our cities housing infrastructure and amenities without the infrastructure and basic amenities a house um, uh, cannot be a livable place so uh, how to plan those housing infrastructure and amenities, how to uh, make the provision for each infrastructure and pro amenities that will be covered in this section. We will after this basic discussion, we will cover uh, the planning principles of various kinds of housing typologies, we will start with the group, uh, group housing and plotted housing, uh, then the cooperative housing. Uh, not only the formal set of the housing, uh, we will also uh, discuss the housing development for the uh, slum improvement which is kind of informal, sometimes illegal. So, we will discuss that part as well. Apart from the formal and informal housing typologies, we will uh, cover special housing types like say uh, old age homes and the working persons hostel, uh, disaster resistant housing and also we will uh, cover the informal housing typology like the urban villages and the uh, illegal construction, how to deal with all those kind of various housing typologies. We will discuss in details how a technology can take a very bigger role uh, to deliver housing in a big way, because uh, the, the current technology which, uh, uh, which constructs the building is age old technologies and it takes much more time. So, we will discuss uh, in, 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 in details that how technology can take a very important role. <coughs> and apart from all the uh, technical matters, the planning matters, policy matters, it is the government who can basically uh, facilitate the housing development and uh, the management and the governance part of the housing um, development will also be covered. And in the concluding session, we will have the overall discussion and we will try to have some uh, uh, projects in the end, so that you can do the projects and you can uh, submit to us and we will take your feedback, so that we can use your feedback, very valuable feedback from this course, because so that we can, um, we can use your feedback in the further courses, because this is the first course, course in this line uh, in, in, the, in the subject of the housing through the NPTEL. Now, what will be the course activities and the expected role from you? Basically, our uh, uh, modalities will be through the lecture, discussions and test, weekly test and the uh, uh, test in the end of the semester. We will have the test and assignments and the feedback through the question and answer and quiz, quiz form. We will have some guided reading, we will give you some reference, so that you can read uh, in your own time and understand in a better way. Then uh, if possible, we will have some uh, provision for the term paper and some case study, K 
case related uh, projects, uh, studying of the live project, live cases, so that you can understand and internalize the, uh, the planning methods. So, this will be the course activities through the uh, all the lecture series. And also definitely those who are interested to appear for the examination uh, to get a certificate, the examination will be there, the detailed methodology and the details of the examination will be available to you in due course of time. Our assessment and evaluation will be basically uh, in the two stage during the course, during the lectures every week we will have the test and assignments that is the part of the formative assessment and at the end we have the summative assessment through the project and the final examination. We will have the certification and feedback as I have told your role, uh, your role is very important, your role is uh, we I expect a very active participation um, uh, through this course and uh, active participation in terms of um, uh, following the course, uh, reading the, uh, the reference uh, materials which will be given to you and the reading materials which will be given to you and also giving the feedback time to time uh, and to participate in the question answer forum um, 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 uh, when during the conducting of the course. Okay. So, this is the overview of the course, how we will uh, take the course from the day 1 to the uh, day 40. Uh, now, uh, having said that, uh, let me start with the introduction session. Uh, uh, you know that most of you, you are coming from the un either undergraduate or postgraduate level from the architecture uh, planning or engineering or management or sociology or maybe geography background. So, uh, it is very important uh, to start the the main discussion of this course like housing policy and planning methods uh, in from a some point of uh, knowledge level where all of us we come to uh, a same platform so that we can understand some basic uh, typologies, basic terminologies concepts and so that we can start the uh, bigger discussion in a better way. So, what I thought that let me <coughs> start with three aspects like uh, introduction to housing, housing classification and the existing situation. These three uh, uh, topics will be covered as the introduction introductory capsule which will be common to all of you. So, that if you digest you can uh, follow these three modules, after this module we can directly enter to the, uh, the discussion on the policy and the planning matter right. So, okay. now let us start the, uh, the introduction to the housing. So, in the introduction, introduction to the housing we will uh, define the definition the housing and the human need its relation and the its significance. So, if you see the dictionary definition, you will find that the Oxford dictionary defines housing as the houses and flats considered collectively. So, it is a very simple uh, description, but for our case we need to uh, define, we need to describe uh, the housing in a better way from various perspective. So, that we can understand what housing exactly means for our purpose and how we can take that definition further towards the other session of the courses. Now, let us see that what are the various uh, perspective on the housing number one. Uh, as uh, we have discussed the definition of the housing as per the dictionary, it is the multiple units. Housing always uh, uh, mean to be multiple units. It is not a single house where you are living uh, in your own plot or in, a, in your house, but always we mean housing as a collective uh, phenomenon of housing, collective phenomenon of not only housing, the community facilities, the infrastructure and community as a whole. So, multiple units is the first dimension, first essential uh, parameter to define a housing. Second, as I told, it is the community, it is the people, it is the society, it is the culture, it is the community, which is the ultimate, which is the objective to, uh, uh, to make a community uh, and housing becomes the uh, the method, the process to make a community. So, our objective is to, uh, to, uh, to, to bring to make a robust community, so that we can have a very livable and, um, uh, and very nice environment, built environment where we can stay together. You can understand that a housing unit or a basic house unit without the basic services like say water supply, sanitation, 
solid waste disposal, electricity, uh, how it is very difficult to stay uh, there. In the, in the older ages, when we stayed in the caves or when we stayed in the village uh, habitation, you know that that time there was no uh, electricity, there was no basic amenities, but when you when we stay, when we live in a city condition, all these basic services are essential to live in a better condition, live healthily and happily. So, basic services is a very, very important dimension for the housing policy, policy and planning. You know that the, the livelihood or the job is the very important part of our life. When we choose a housing or when we try to uh, purchase a house, the first thing what we look for is that how far the housing location from our job location. Why? Because the, 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 mo the more distant is the, uh, the job location from our house, the more travel time it will be required for from our home to workplace and more travel time means it is the less time for our family, less time for our individual, less time for our work. That is why the relation between the livelihood and the work is very, very important in considering in defining a housing. So, slowly, slowly you will find that livelihood takes a very big role in housing policy and planning. So, here we identify livelihood as a very important dimension of housing policy and planning. Then it is the affordability uh, or the financial capability of the people uh, which determines the, the capability to purchase a house or to procure a house. And, it and in, in a country like India, uh, we have different economic groups and based on the different economic groups, various afford affordability limits are there. The challenge is to how to uh, make uh, most out of the minimum affordability level. So, affordability is a very crucial uh, financial aspect in defining a housing and at the last it is the individuality which is also very important part because ultimately as an individual when we um, stay in a house or we live in a housing complex or in a community it is this it is, the, it is the relation between the individual and the space. The space may be the bedroom, space may be the study room, space may be the, uh, the, um, the, the open interactive area, it may be the playground, but it is the relation between the individual and the spaces which makes a house as a housing and a sweet home. So, individuality matters a lot. You will find that in your house may be the color scheme, may be the design, may be the furniture layout, may be the internal layout is different than your uh, neighbors, even if the other parameters are same. So, it is the individuality, your choice, your selection, your preference, your priority which makes your home different than the other home. So, individuality takes a very big role in defining housing. So, in short this six parameter the multiple units, community, services, livelihood, affordability and individuality these are the various dimensions of the housing which we will take forward for the further discussion. So, let us see through the, um, um, through the diagram uh, diagrammatic representation the six uh, dimensions and this six dimensions are also interlinked between uh, every dimension. So, this is very important I request you that please keep this in your mind uh, because this will be utilized throughout our lecture series. Okay. Now, let us discuss about the, uh, the housing uh, and the human need that how house a simple house uh, satisfies a human need. Uh, to discuss this particular aspect, I uh, will bring a diagram which you might have seen. Uh, uh, you, can, uh, you can guess that what is the diagram. This diagram is basically uh, the, the conceptual uh, representation of the human need. This was proposed by uh, famous uh, sociologist uh, Abraham Maslow uh, uh, through this uh, diagram. In this diagram, uh, he says that there are five categories of human need starting from the basic category to the further categories and every categories have a very distinct uh, 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 relation and distinct uh, position in human life. Now, let us see one by one. The first category uh, which is given at the bottom of this uh, conceptual pyramid which is called as a physiological need which is nothing but the food, water, warmth and the rest. A house which basically 
primarily essentially gives you a the physiological uh, 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 physiological warmth or the uh, or the rest apart from the food and water you can get the food from your uh, from your occupation or job but uh, all the other uh, physiological needs including the safety needs uh, given by a house think about the situation where earthquake uh, cyclone or the flood or the landslide these disasters comes and you will find that there are some houses which are still strong and protects uh, people and there are houses which are not so strong but which affects people life people died so so in those cases when the houses are not that much strong uh, on those cases they fail to give the physiological needs and the safety needs for the housing but a strong house which is uh, designed and constructed based on the technicalities and the uh, and the all the scientific um, uh, methods that will provide the physiological needs and safety needs for the people so these two needs which is at the bottom of the pyramid which is called as the basic needs now when you fulfill these two needs like uh, we fulfill our physiological needs and safety needs now we need uh, we have further needs like say belonging needs and the relationship we need to have our family we need to have our community we need to have our relatives which will come to our house we, or we will go to their house and when we have relatives friends around us we feel comfortable and we feel fine and you can understand that even your house and your community your community area this gives uh, that space to create your community to create your relatives to create your uh, families as well and relationship after that it is a esteem needs which uh, which is important esteem is nothing but the the recognition of the people as a human being think about the situation in our cities uh, to think about two situation a person who is having a house and a person who is who is not having a house maybe who is uh, living in the slums or who is living in the pavement uh, pavements or maybe open area so you can understand that a person who is having a house definitely he has more recognition as a person as a human being in our society because he enjoys all the basic needs right so esteem needs which is nothing but the recognition or the or, or the human prestige which is also related to house because a house fulfills all the other basic amenities so this belongingness and the family and the um, uh, social needs and the esteem needs which is individual these needs are called as a psychological needs so where the first two uh, layer in the bottom of the pyramid is the basic need and second two uh, layer is basically the psychological need of the people now the final stage is very important when we fulfill all these needs uh, then we have the uh, the self actualization which is nothing but which is the fulfilling the human potential you can understand that those people who can fulfill the all the other four needs which is in the bottom of the pyramid after that only they can work better they can work productively they can work more and they can uh, work for their life and they can enjoy their life more and they can uh, they can fulfill their human potential in a bit better way so this cannot come directly uh, because it is in the top of the pyramid this will come first so you can imagine that a house or a housing complex or a community will come uh, one by one physiological needs needs safety needs belongingness esteem and self actualization one by one so this will uh, come through the house uh, it is uh, inevitable you can understand the the relation between the how the human needs and the house so what are the significance for uh, for this relation uh, between the uh, uh, house and the human need so it is a basic need housing is a basic needs in all cities you will find that it is the mostly 50 to 60% of the city which is covered by the housing so think about this gigantism its uh, its uh, volume its quantity it is not very small so the problem is that's why it is very gigantic as a result of that it, it it makes the predominant built character wherever you go in which city any any cities we will find that the city image and the city built character is determined by the housing quality and that is why it always received the government attention attention from all category because this is the primary need there is a investment and job, job opportunity at all level housing provides maximum job opportunity after the uh, agricultural and industrial sector so housing is a very important um, um, factor in economic generation 
And most importantly in last 20 years we have seen phenomenal change in the housing policy planning, the technological developments, the approach thought, uh, the, uh, the conceptualization of the housing, how we, um, we, we considered housing as a subject. And as a matter of that, the traditional knowledge what we uh, learned th 20 to 30 years back may not work in the current day housing uh, policy and practice. So, therefore, that is the significance of studying of the housing policy. And it is also important that in um, though we um, teach housing as a subject in the undergraduate and um, postgraduate, but there are various numbers of students in our country who cannot reach a, 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 a course like housing policy and planning. That is why uh, this is very, very significant uh, to have a course like this. So, let us summarize the basic introduction of the session. We told that housing can be described from various dimensions. A simple definition like a multiple units is not sufficient for us. We identified that it is the multiple units, community, basic services, livelihood, affordability and the individuality. These six dimensions are the like kind of a basic pillars of the definition of the housing. Housing serves the basic physiological needs, psychological needs and the personal needs and when these needs are fulfilled people are motivated to do better and that is why the people in the human need and the housing has a great uh, 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 relation which we discussed. And why it is very insignificant? Because it got the attention from all the government sector, NGOs and all the international sector because it is a human uh, basic need and it covers 50 to 60 percent in the city. It is a predominant build character and it is also a complex problem. It is multidisciplinary in nature, only one person, uh, one architect, one planner or one engineer cannot solve this problem. It is a, it is a problem which where everybody has to come together, work together to solve the problem. And there are various ongoing debates which were there in the last 20 or 15 years and because of that the whole traditional knowledge has changed from the older diagram, paradigm to the new paradigm. So, as a matter of that the, 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 the subject has changed a lot that is why it is very very significant to learn housing policy and planning in a greater way. So, with this we conclude this, um, uh, this first unit of the housing introduction. In the second part we will have another discussion of the, uh, of the housing introduction, we will discuss the conceptual framework of the classification of the housing, how we differentiate various typologies of the housing, so that we can start the further discussion in a better way. So, I thank you once again to uh, participate in the course and to start the course from the lecture one, thank you.